It's very often that once people find out what I do as a profession, we get into the does that mean game. And the does that mean game goes a little something like this. Hey doc, a lot of times at night, I gotta get up to go pee. Does that mean I'm diabetic? And I'm like, well, um, hey doc, a lot of times I get this itching back here. Does that mean I'm diabetic? I mean, hey doc, I wanna show you something. I got this, hey, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Nope, 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 nope. Now, don't get me wrong. I have no problem whatsoever answering these questions because I feel like the more empowered and educated my patients are, the more successful they'll be. In this video, I wanna list out seven of the most common warning signs that you may have high blood sugar and or be diabetic. Stay tuned. What's going on family? This is Edward Williams, licensed physician assistant and founder and creator of Health Biting Necessary. And I wanna welcome you to our channel where we talk about all things health and insulin resistance. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. That way you can be notified every time we release a new video. So here at HBAM, we are all about self-care and you being your primary care provider. But in order for this to happen, there has to be a foundation of education plus empowerment in order for you to be well aware of what's going on with your body and what to do about it. And particularly in this video, I wanna talk about insulin resistance, high blood sugar, and or diabetes. The reason why I want you to understand this topic so much is because most people are intimidated. And if you're intimidated by this condition, that means you don't understand it. And if you don't understand it, it's hard to defeat it. Therefore, what we're gonna do is go video by video, breaking down this condition and what you need to do to prevent it and or reverse it. Now, before we begin, yes, of course, if you want to find out if you have high blood sugar, insulin resistant, and or diabetic, you can easily go and get blood work. However, I know that for many people that is not practical, uh, simply because maybe they have to make an appointment and that appointment may be a month out. Uh, maybe because they don't have insurance. Maybe it's because they don't like their practitioner or they might be intimidated by their practitioner. So, although I recommend that you set up an appointment to speak with your primary care provider, in the meantime, in between time, I want to list out seven of the most common warning signs that you may have high blood sugar. All right, so before we get into the seven warning signs, I want to break this down into four categories. The reason why it's so important to understand these four categories is because once you understand how high glucose and high insulin affects the body, you'll be able to understand why this is such an issue, but also you'll be able to understand your signs and symptoms so much better. The first category is compromised blood flow. And so when we're talking about compromised blood flow, what you have to understand about high glucose is that this is going to increase the viscosity of the blood. Now we're talking about viscosity of any type of fluid. Uh, this deals with the actual thickness. And so you can kind of picture this as being water versus syrup or molasses because that is really thick. So when we're talking about something like water, we understand that water moves around easy. It's very fluid that would be considered to have a low viscosity. There's less particles in that water. However, when we look at something like syrup or molasses, that is very high in uh, viscosity because it's very thick. And so when that uh, syrup or molasses moves around, it's very thick, it's very slow, and it's very sludgy. So when it comes to high glucose, you need to understand that high glucose means that your blood is gonna have a high viscosity meaning that your blood is gonna be harder to move around the arteries and the blood vessels that you have. In addition to that, this is gonna make it harder for your body to deliver that blood to where it needs to go. And once again, you can kind of picture that as uh, using a glass of water with a straw and drinking from that straw. It's gonna be pretty easy to move that water up the straw. However, if you have a glass of syrup or molasses and you're trying to suck it through that straw, it's gonna take a lot of work and you're gonna be exhausted and it's gonna move very slow. Now, can you do it? Yes, but it won't be efficient. Next, high glucose decreases the functioning of your immune system. It's said that on average, high glucose decreases the functionality of your immune system for about four hours, which means that it's gonna decrease the white blood cells and what we call the phagocytes. Uh, once this happens, your immune system is going to decrease and your body won't be able to defend itself as effectively as it would if your blood sugar levels were normal. Next, now, you all know that high glucose increases the insulin. You all know that because you watched my other video called Insulin Resistance Explained. Now, because we all know that high glucose increases the insulin and causes high insulin, 
I want you all to picture having a mixture of high glucose and high insulin as being something like a scouring pad. So back in the days when I was a kid, my sister used to force me to do her chores around the house and one of her chores was washing the dishes. Now, so in order to scrub the pot, we used to use a scouring pad. And this scouring pad is something that's very uh, hard and it's rough. And we, I would scrape it around the pot in order to get everything out of the pot. What I need you to visualize is high insulin levels being something like the scouring pad. If you took a scouring pad and you brushed it against your skin, what you're going to see is you're going to have like little lines. And eventually, if you continue doing that, you're going to actually cut your skin. You're going to cause an abrasion. Well, if you do that, what's going to happen? This is going to mount an inflammatory response. Once again, inflammation is not a disease. This is part of the healing process. So your body's going to mount an inflammatory response. This is going to increase the blood flow in this area. There's going to be some edema or what we call swelling. Uh, this is going to allow the white blood cells and everything else to come to that area in order to heal it. Once that healing process starts, you're going to see your blood get thicker. It's going to increase the viscosity. Your blood is going to start to clot on that cut, which eventually will become a scab. Now I want you to flip it and reverse it and let's go inside the body. Understand that when you have chronic levels of high insulin and high glucose, this is just like taking a scouring pad and brushing it against your arteries, your blood vessels. Your body's going to try to heal it, but over time, this healing process is going to cause more problems because this high level of glucose and insulin is not something that should be sustained. Once this starts to happen, we're going to now take the arteries from being this wide or the blood vessels from being this wide. When that inflammation starts, you're going to get less area for the blood to flow. This ultimately is going to compromise the blood flow to your trillions of cells. And this overall leads to your circulation all over your body being compromised. And the last category is fluid disruption. So when you have high glucose, once again, you have a lot of particles. The, the, uh, the viscosity is going to be higher in the bloodstream. With this high amount of glucose in the bloodstream, this is going to increase what we call the tone of the fluid, tonicity. Uh, this means that there's more particles in that fluid versus what's in the cells. And because of that increase in the tonicity, uh, this is going to force the cells to release the water that they already have in your cells in order to dilute the blood sugar. This is something the body doesn't necessarily want to do, but it will if it has to. And so having high sugar in your bloodstream is going to cause the water inside the cells to now come out into the bloodstream, leaving the cells dehydrated. All right, so just a quick recap on those four categories. We're talking about compromised blood flow, decreased immunity, inflammation, and fluid disruption. So now that we've covered those four categories, let's go into the seven warning signs that you might be diabetic. Warning sign number one, polyuria. So when you see the word poly, when we're dealing with medical or science or biology, I want you to think of this as being many, multiple. And then urea means urine. So polyurea simply means increased urination. And so once again, this is a very common symptom that I see often with patients who are undiagnosed with diabetes or either diagnosed with diabetes, but it's unmanaged. And so we have to understand that the body is intelligent. The body is constantly trying to maintain this balance of homeostasis. High blood sugar is not homeostasis. It's not the area where the body wants to be. And so what's going to happen? Your body is going to redirect a lot of the blood sugar to your liver so that it can be converted to fat and then shipped out to the fat cells. However, if your blood sugar is extremely high, I'm talking about 180, which is the threshold, your body is going to now redirect that blood glucose to your kidneys in order for it to be filtrated out of the body into the urine to help decrease that glucose. Now, in order for your body to do this, that high amount of glucose needs to be diluted. With what? Water. Where is your body going to get this water? Well, because your body is in such an adverse situation, it's now going to have to pull the water from the cells. Now, your body having to utilize the water inside of the cells is a huge problem because those cells, those trillions of cells that we have, they need that water. However, at the time, that high blood sugar is a bigger problem to deal with. And so your body is now going to have to utilize the water inside the cells to dilute that high glucose in order to send it to your kidneys in order for it to be extruded out through urine. And so commonly what happens is when people have high glucose, they find themselves having to go to the bathroom over and over and over and over and over, especially at night. And this is something I really hear a lot from patients. And in addition to that, 
We can also see that sugar in the urine when we do a urinalysis or when we do a dipstick. And so in other words, when we go to test their urine, we can literally see that there is sugar in the urine by doing the urinalysis or by doing a dipstick. And here's an interesting fact, back in Kemet or Egypt, this was one of the ways that they would tell if someone was diabetic or not. Now, there weren't many diabetics at all back in that time. However, they did realize that some people, when they urinated on the ground, this would attract ants. The reason why that was occurring is because there was literally sugar in their urine, which would attract ants. Now, something else very important for us to understand is that your kidneys having to work this hard to filter out that much glucose is very harsh on the kidneys. Uh, in fact, doing this over time can cause damage to what they call the nephrons. This is called nephropathy. This is uh, when you were start to talk about kidney disease. Uh, over time, this can lead to kidney failure, which will lead to dialysis. So please don't ignore this sign. All right, number two, the second warning sign that you may have high blood sugar is called polydipsia. Once again, let's look at the word poly, meaning many or multiple, and dipsia means thirst. So essentially we're talking about increased thirst or excessive thirst. Now, once again, rewind this and look at the first warning sign, which is polyuria. That means increased urination. So because you're going to the restroom a whole lot, guess what? You're, you're losing a lot of fluid. Now, your cells, they need multiple things. We're talking about oxygen. We're talking about nutrients and also water. They need that water. And so when you have that high glucose, this is forcing the cells to release the water they already have in it. Your body has to do this because glucose just going to your kidneys, it's not, your kidneys won't be able to filter that out. It needs to be diluted. In order for it to be diluted, it needs more water and that water is coming from your cells. Once this starts to happen, you're going to start to become dehydrated. Now, most of Americans are dehydrated at a mild level at least. However, when you're diabetic, you are most likely going to be uh, dehydrated for the simple fact you have high blood sugar. Once this starts to happen, this is going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, dehydration itself causes multiple problems such as fatigue, uh, such as cramps, uh, also headaches. And when your body starts to feel this dehydration, this is going to signal your brain to drink more water. Your body's trying to do this to replenish the water that's being lost at a very rapid rate because you're urinating because the sugar is high. Now, unfortunately, what people do to add insult to injury is that they reach for something like a soda or juice to quench their thirst. Uh, this makes things 10 times worse. So if you find yourself drinking excessively and you're not really sure why, it may be time for you to get checked out. Number three, the third sign that you may have high blood sugar is blurry vision. Uh, so once again, let's picture that glass. If you have a glass of water, if you look through the glass and the light, you can see through it pretty clear. However, if you add a little bit of sugar to that water and you mix it up, things become a little cloudy. Well, that's similar to what's going on with blurry vision. When blood sugar goes very high, once again, we understand this increases the pressure, this increases the tonicity. This is also going to start to damage smaller blood vessels. And one of the most common blood vessels that are going to be damaged are the ones that are supplying the eye with blood. Once this starts to happen, you're going to start to have fluid that's going to leak out into the lens of your eyes. And this is going to be essentially just like having sugar added to water and things are going to be blurry. Now, if you have this problem, you need to understand this is something that you need to stop in its tracks immediately. The reason why is because this eventually leads to damage of the retina causing retinopathy leading to blindness. Fortunately, this is one of the symptoms that I've seen easily turn around by getting that blood sugar down. So if you notice your vision becoming a little blurry, please get checked out because this may be a sign of high blood sugar. And if that blurry vision continues over time, this can lead to blindness, meaning you never see again. Number four. So the fourth sign that you may have high blood sugar is increased yeast infections. What we have to understand is that having high blood sugar and also high amounts of glucose in your urine serves as the perfect environment for something like yeast. In fact, that's like a buffet for yeast. And when 
Yeast is in that type of an environment. This creates an overgrowth. That overgrowth of yeast will now lead to a yeast infection. And so if a female, a patient of mine, is noticing that they're having yeast infections uh, multiple times, even after being treated, that is a clear sign that they may have high blood sugar. Now, this is not limited to women only. Men can also have yeast infection, although I will say that it's rare. Uh, so the yeast infection does not have to be only in the uh, private parts. This can also exist under the arms, in the mouth, or even under the skin folds. Essentially, anywhere that is warm and moist and also covered up, that can create a yeast infection if you have high blood sugar. So be on the lookout for areas of your skin that seems to be itchy, uh, red, irritated, or inflamed. So if you find yourself having any of these problems, increased yeast infection, uh, increased UTIs, or infections under the skin, then this is a sign that you may have high blood sugar. Number five. Now, the fifth sign that you may have high blood sugar is decreased wound healing or poor wound healing. Um, and this one is very sad to see it happen or to hear stories about it happening. Um, essentially, it starts off with a, a nick. Somebody stubbed a toe, uh, a small cut on the feet somewhere, and then that small cut turns into an ulcer, and that ulcer turns into an infection. That infection turns into gangrene. The gangrene pretty much rots the toe, and the toe needs to be cut off, or the foot needs to be cut off. And this is something that escalates, unfortunately, very fast. And the whole time, for the most part, they were completely unaware of it. And we'll talk about why they weren't unaware of it. However, normally the body should be able to fight off an infection. But if you're diabetic or if you have high blood sugar, we have to understand that one, you're going to have a decrease in the immune system. Two, you're also going to have a decrease in uh, circulation of blood. And three, you're also going to be, have increased inflammation. So those three uh, components, when we look at it, when we're talking about something such as uh, an infection, you have to understand that if you injure yourself, the amount of blood flow that should get to the area will not happen. And so in the case where someone injures their toe and they have high blood sugar or they're diabetic, their healing process is going to be completely different. One, because of the high glucose and high insulin, their vessels are going to be narrow. They're going to be narrow in the body just in general because of the inflammation. However, when it comes to the smaller vessels, they're, they're, they're going to be very narrow. Uh, and this is going to cause a decrease in blood flow. And so they're going to have suboptimal blood flow to the smaller parts of their body, such as their toes and their fingers. Uh, in addition to that, they now have to try to push around blood that is has high viscosity. So we talked about the thickness of blood. When you have high blood sugar, your blood is harder to push around the body. And so the body has to work harder and this makes it less optimal for the blood in the cells. And then three, because of the high amount of glucose, this is going to slow down the, uh, the performance of your white blood cells and also the uh, phagocytes as well too. Uh, these are components that are supposed to eat away the debris and also clean up the infections itself. And so when we have an environment like this going on and then we injure ourselves, it's going to be very hard to actually mount a healing process because there's so many aspects of your immune system that are going to be compromised. And so once again, this is going to lead to a cut becoming an ulcer or a wound. Uh, this wound becoming infected. This infection, if untreated, becomes uh, gangrene and then it just gets worse from there. So this is a huge problem uh, because it's one of the most common things that lead to amputations. In fact, uh, being diabetic is one of the number one causes for amputations in this country. So please check your feet often. Uh, make sure to look under your feet, in between your toes. But whatever you do, please take this serious. Number six. The next sign that you may have high blood sugar is numbness and tingling. Um, this is called neuropathy. And it's a very devastating condition to be dealing with. Um, you know, I have a lot of patients who would try to explain it. And essentially they explain it as being something that's very uh, agonizing, uh, painful, and annoying. Um, and the reason why this is happening is the reason why a lot of these other things are happening. Uh, decrease in the blood flow. Once again, in the smaller areas of your body, we have smaller blood vessels. These are gonna take a lot of damage. 
Uh, and when this damage starts to happen to the smaller blood vessels, the amount of blood flow to these areas are going to dramatically decrease. Once this starts to happen, everything in that area is going to suffer, including your nerves. And so when that blood supply to the nerves is not adequate enough, this is going to cause damage to the nerves itself. Once this starts to happen, uh, this is going to register as numbness, pins, needles. And this is also why someone can have an injury to their toe or as part of their foot and have no idea because they no longer have feeling in that part of their body. So numbness, tingling, uh, pins and needles, uh, feeling sensation in your feet or in your hands is another sign that you may have high blood sugar. Number seven. Now, the seventh sign that you may have high blood sugar is fatigue. In this situation, when you're diabetic or you have high blood sugar or insulin resistance and you're dealing with fatigue, it could be coming from several things. That is what we call reactive hypoglycemia, uh, dehydration, increased viscosity in your blood, and also depression. Now, on a side note, I want to just say depression is very common in people who are diabetic. Um, and a lot of times that's really centered around the, the feeling of hopelessness and the feeling of being trapped in your body as well as being trapped in your diagnosis. And I'll definitely say that a lot of practitioners unfortunately do not provide uh, hope or do not provide enough guidance and education to help them not feel like that. So if you are diabetic or insulin resistant uh, or you know someone who is and they're dealing with depression, please help them out, have them seek help, uh, get them in a group of people who are working towards improving their health. Uh, understand that this is a, a long and sometimes uh, unnecessarily a, a lonely road that they don't have to be on. A lot of times people just feel completely trapped and lost in their diagnosis. So depression is very big amongst type 2 diabetics. Uh, and I just want to make sure that you all are aware of that. If you're dealing with depression uh, because of your diagnosis, or maybe you didn't even realize that's because of your diagnosis, please seek help. Uh, please seek a community of people to help you out, improve your health. All right. All right. So reactive hypoglycemia as pertains to fatigue. Let's look at the word reactive means to respond to something. Uh, hypo means low glycemia. We're talking about glucose. So essentially this is uh, reactive low blood sugar. This happens after a meal, but not just any meal. Commonly it's a standard American diet processed foods. Essentially what happens if someone is already insulin resistant, this means that they already have uh, cells that are down regulated as pertains to the insulin receptor. So what's going to happen once they eat this food, uh, their blood sugar is going to increase. The blood sugar is going to go very high, which is going to make the insulin uh, go very high as well. Your pancreas is going to secrete a lot of insulin in order to deal with this blood sugar. However, in many cases, as someone who is insulin resistant, uh, this is going, the pancreas is going to overshoot the amount of insulin that's needed because it's trying to get it down in such a fast manner. This is going to cause the blood sugar to what they call crash. When this crash happens, because the blood sugar is becoming so much lower, the person is going to feel very tired, very lethargic, uh, fatigued. But also something that the person may also notice is that they feel hungry again. This is happening because your blood sugar becomes lower uh, and this is going to signal your body that we need something else to bring that blood sugar back up. And so what happens is this becomes a roller coaster of ups and downs, ups and downs. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons people can feel fatigue uh, when they're diabetic or insulin resistant or have high blood sugar. The next thing that can lead to fatigue in someone who is uh, diabetic or has high blood sugar is dehydration. So once again, I've talked about multiple times throughout this video how high blood sugar causes dehydration. Well, you need to understand that one of the very first and most common signs of dehydration in general outside of someone who's not diabetic is fatigue. If I have a patient that's coming into the office and their number one uh, complaint is fatigue, just feeling tired, I'm looking at dehydration. So I'm going to be checking their skin, I'm going to be checking the uh, mucosa inside their mouth. I'm looking for all types of signs and symptoms that they may be dehydrated. So when we're looking at someone who is uh, insulin resistant, we already understand that they are more likely to be dehydrated. If you are dehydrated, this means that your cells are very low on water, which is going to cause it to function at a very suboptimal level. 
Uh, also with that dehydration, you're going to be lower in minerals, uh, electrolytes, the potassium, magnesium. You're going to be lower on all those things. Uh, this is going to cause a decrease in functioning of the cells. This is going to cause you to feel uh, slow and tired and sluggish. And speaking of sluggish, another reason why people can feel fatigue uh, when they have high glucose is because one, the viscosity of that blood is so thick. And when you have, once again, thick blood uh, because of the high glucose, I want you to picture drinking water from a glass with a straw and just how easy it is to drink something that has lower viscosity versus drinking syrup or molasses out of a glass through a straw. You can do it, but it's going to take a lot of work. And if your life depended on you trying to drink this glass of syrup within a minute, you can imagine how much work that would be for your body uh, or for you to actually make that happen. It's going to be a lot. And so trying to deliver blood through your trillions of cells in something so viscous, it's a lot of work. It's very demanding. But not only that, because of the high particles of glucose, this leaves less room for the nutrients and the oxygen that the red blood cells should be delivering. And so those are the four reasons that can lead to fatigue inside someone who has high levels of blood sugar uh, because of dehydration, increased viscosity, the reactive hypoglycemia, and also we talked about first was the depression. So please don't ignore any of these warning signs. So there you have it. Those are the seven common warning signs that you may have high blood sugar, uh, be diabetic or insulin resistant. Now, of course, there are other things such as weight gain, uh, gum infection, something called acanthosis, nigricans, uh, skin tags, and so much more. But I wanted to talk about the seven warning signs that I see and hear about often when I'm seeing my patients. All right, so what do we do from here? Well, first, I want you to go back and watch this video again. I want you to take notes and I also want you to do a thorough examination on yourself to see what signs and symptoms you may be dealing with. Uh, please don't forget to check your feet in between your toes particularly. Next, the reason why this is so important, once again, when we talk about the blurriness, when we talk about the tingling of the feet, uh, when we talk about the, the cuts on your feet, uh, you have to understand that every day is important. And so the earlier you can catch any of these things, the better. And that also increases the chance that you can actually improve your condition. Next, I want you to go ahead and set up an appointment with your PCP, your primary care provider. That way you can get labs done and you can know for sure whether or not you are dealing with diabetes, uh, prediabetes, or insulin resistance. Now, for a list of what labs I recommend, please go back and check out the video called Insulin Resistance Explained. In that video, I talk about getting your fasting insulin, I talk about your A1C, I talk about your uh, also other labs that I recommend you getting. But please go ahead and set up that appointment, that way you can get that blood work done. Also, go ahead and get you a glucometer. I don't care really which one you get, uh, just get one that you're gonna use. Now, what I want you to do with this glucose meter is I want you to start tracking your finger sticks. I want you to track your finger stick in the morning, fasting to see what it is. I want you also to track your finger stick about an hour and a half to two hours after you have your first meal. The reason why I want you to do this is because this is going to tell you whether or not you are insulin resistant, uh, pre-diabetic or diabetic. Now, what you're going to do, eat your meal, hopefully you're eating a healthy meal. Uh, but I want you to eat your meal and then I want you to wait an hour and a half to two hours afterwards and I want you to check your blood sugar. If your blood sugar is over 140 two hours after eating, that means most likely you are pre-diabetic. If your blood sugar is over 200 after two hours of eating, there's a very, very, very good chance that you are diabetic. Now, once again, make sure you get the blood work. Either way you cut it, if after two hours you're at 140 or above, you're definitely insulin resistant. You have to get the blood work to find out if you are diabetic or pre-diabetic, but we know for a fact that you are at least insulin resistant. Next, I want you to get to work. If you're questioning any of this, this means that you already know work needs to be done. Now, if you're not sure about what steps need to be taken, once again, go back to my video called Insulin Resistance Explained. In that video, I lay out five simple strategies to improve your overall health, uh, especially if you're a diabetic or pre-diabetic or insulin resistant. So please check out that video. And lastly, I highly recommend you pick up the book that I just finished writing called Done With Diabetes. This is five simple strategies to reverse diabetes, get off medications, and avoid complications in 90 days. 
In this book, I lay out a 90 day plan of action to radically improve your health. But of course, make sure you talk to your practitioner, get their advice, let them know what you're doing. All right. So, all right, everybody, this wraps up the video. I really hope that I was able to help you out. If you have any questions or any comments or at all, just leave them below and I'll do my best to get back to them. In the meantime, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and share this video out with any of your family or your friends that could benefit from it. In addition to all that, please let me know what topics you would like for me to cover as it pertains to health improvement and insulin resistance. All right, everybody, this is your brother Edward Williams signing off. And remember, it is our community, our responsibility. Let's get it. Peace. So understand that increasing. Hold on. Go get. That was my cat. Dog. Pitbull. All black. Not cat. Um.